Hey guys, so we've got a quick bonus video this week as news just broke that Shelob will be making an appearance in the upcoming second season of The Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power. I decided to do a quick video on this news to cover some theories on how they could be bringing this character into the fray and naturally to talk about some of the lore behind the character. Now it's been a few months since we had a Rings of Power related video here on the channel that being my 75 minute review of season one, which has been viewed over a million times here on YouTube. So if you wanna dive deep into my thoughts on season one, check it out. Turning back to today's news, Shelob will be among the list of characters added for season two. When I joined Fellowship of Fans for their conversation announcing the scoop, Harry noted that this is going to be a small appearance, likely only in a single episode of the show. Personally, I think this is a good call as seeing too much of a character like Shelob could take away some of her scariness and undermine her reputation as a mysterious dark terror. As I've thought over the possible circumstances of Shelob's appearance, I've got three main theories on how we could see this play out. But first, let's cover a bit of history behind the character prior to the Second Age and where we might find her in the show. Shelob is the offspring of the giant spider-like creature Ungoliant, a creature who grows so great that she very nearly kills Morgoth himself. Before this, Ungoliant assists Morgoth in destroying the two trees, something we only got a hint of in the Rings of Power season one, with Ungoliant herself being omitted. After being driven off by Morgoth's Balrogs, Ungoliant settles in the mountains of Dorthonion, which is then named Ered Gorgoroth, the Mountains of Terror. It is there that she mates with and devours other foul creatures of spider form, giving birth to Shelob and her siblings. While Ungoliant would leave this area for the forgotten south of the world, Shelob and her kind inhabit the valley south of the mountains, which is then named Nandungortheb, the Valley of Dreadful Death. After the War of Wrath and the destruction of Beleriand, Shelob flees to the lands of Mordor. While we don't know for certain when she came to dwell there, we know that by the time Sauron claims Mordor as his own around 1000 of the Second Age, Shelob has already long been settled in the Ethel Duath, where Frodo and Sam would encounter her over 5,000 years later. With that base of Shelob's history, let's talk about a few guesses I have of how Rings of Power could use Shelob in the story of the Second Age. First, we have what I think a lot of folks will guess, that we'll see Sauron meet Shelob. We last saw Sauron heading into Mordor at the close of season one, so it's a fair theory we could see the encounter where Sauron learns of her existence. As was brought up in the Fellowship of Fans talk, we could get a first meeting that mirrors the legendary confrontation between Ungoliant and Morgoth, with Shelob attempting to capture and devour Sauron. Considering the number of first age nods we saw in the prologue of season one alone, I could see this taking place, as the show did enjoy showing some things that looked like Silmarillion moments, but weren't for legal rights reasons. One example being Finrod taking an oath, a la the Oath of Feanor. While I think it would be best if they forged their own path forward, I would much prefer something that alludes to the Silmarillion rather than the Return of the King. We've already seen Samwise the Brave face off against Shelob, so whatever happens here should feel like its own moment. My second theory involves another character who was last seen in the lands of Mordor, Isildur. Oh yeah, spoiler alert, the guy who shows up in the prologue of Fellowship of the Ring didn't die in a collapsed house in season one. Somehow, someway, Isildur is going to eventually find his way back to Numenor. But first, he's gonna have to find his way out of Mordor. If, say, the passage between the mountains is blocked by orcs, Isildur may attempt to travel in stealth through the mountains, where he could encounter Shelob. It could make for a tense episode as Isildur attempts to escape her tunnels. Not to mention, it could be the beginning of Shelob's reputation as a dark terror dwelling in the Mountains of Shadow. And I guess you could say it would give a little extra reasoning why Isildur would later establish the Gondorian city of Minas Ithil, which guards against Mordor, of course, but also controls an important pass between the realms. The natural question would arise as to why the later Gondorians wouldn't know exactly what Shelob was if Isildur had been there. But this could be answered with the encounter Isildur's own ancestor had with the spawn of Ungoliant, 
and possibly Shelob herself. In the first age, Baron makes his way through Nandungortheb. After fighting his way through this valley of dreadful death, we are told, but he spoke of it to no one after, lest the horror return to his mind. If this experience is truly as horrifying as one could imagine, it's easy to see why someone would only speak of it with vague warnings. What eventually will be known through rumor of bygone days, a dark terror in the passes of the Ethel Duath. Finally, at least for now, I have a third theory that again involves Sauron, but also a big send-off for a season one character. As we know, we currently have both Sauron and Adar in Mordor, and at some point the leadership of the orcs will have to go from Adar to Sauron. If we see these two come into direct conflict with one another, I'd expect Sauron to have the upper hand, and to defeat Adar and put him in his place. Not only that, but if Sauron were to defeat Adar, it stands to reason that he wouldn't leave Adar alive, and instead kill him in order to both make an example of him and strike fear into the hearts of his orcs. What better way to kill off an important character from season one like Adar than having Sauron throw him into Shelob's lair for him to meet his demise? In the Two Towers, we learn that Sauron refers to Shelob as his cat and would send her prisoners that he had no better use for. It could make for a memorable death for Adar, a chance for Sauron to display some of his cruelty and malice, and make for a short but impactful appearance for Shelob. It could also work in the respect that we would see Sauron using others as the manipulator he is. He uses Shelob to dispose of his enemy, and he uses his enemy's death to show the orcs they are back under his command, causing them to serve him out of fear. Now, I know what you're thinking, what if Shelob shows up and can take the form of a woman and is actually kinda Sauron's ex-girlfriend? Now, I feel fairly confident that we'll get a purely spider Shelob here, but I guess you never know. There's been things in this show I definitely didn't have on my bingo card. Still, I would expect to see Shelob in a depiction reasonably similar to what we saw in The Return of the King, though it would be interesting if they opted for the book-accurate bite versus the film's stinger for poisoning her prey. Again, I think having Shelob appear in a limited capacity is definitely the way to go, and the potential of seeing Sauron use Shelob as a means to dispose of his enemies could be a cool way to benefit Sauron's character, while also working in another character that would both make sense lore-wise and be recognizable to casual fans. Let me know in the comments what you think of Shelob making an appearance in Season 2 of Rings of Power, and let me know your theories on how this might play out. And don't forget to check out our discussion over on Fellowship of Fans, where we talk through this news and some other bits relating to Season 2 of Rings of Power. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next time on Nerd of the Rings.